What's up everyone? Joe from China Cycling here. Something a bit different today. Today we're at this event. So these guys, the messengers of the Silk Road, on day 14 of their 8,552 kilometer 40 day race across China. Now it's not your typical ultra endurance race like the Trans Am or the TCR. Uh, my teammate Marcus is currently racing in the TCR and that's a totally different kettle of fish. Uh, the Messengers of the Silk Road is fully supported and more of a friendly, super lung, party, cultural exchange, history class, TV show. It's kind of hard to summarize in a sentence, so let me show you guys what they get up to. So the race started with a five-day warm-up race around the Shanghai area before hitting the actual Silk Road. For those that don't know, the Silk Road was established around 2000 years ago and was basically a series of trade routes between the East and the West. Uh, the most predominant of them being the Chang'an Tianshan Road Route, which this race closely follows. The race takes place over approximately 40 days and goes through 29 major cities as it snakes its way across China and into Kazakhstan. Uh, only eight riders were chosen from all of the applicants and they were chosen to represent China's different minorities and cultures. So there's some from the mainland, uh, some from Hong Kong, there's a female rider from Inner Mongolia and even a guy from Serbia. And as for the race, as some of the sections are timed races where the riders can really put the pedal to the metal, but when they're going through the main cities, the clock is usually stopped on the race to prevent people having to try race through heavy traffic or whatever. And this actually works out really well because in every city there are usually scores of local riders who come out to welcome the messengers and they all want to swap stories and take photos with them. And uh, usually these local riders will also ride along for a while until the next city where the messengers will be greeted by the next group of locals and so on. I've got to say, the locals were super enthusiastic. Even on miserable rainy days, they came out in scores to welcome the messengers. Now, as I said in the intro, the race doesn't claim to be a hardcore self-supported endurance race like the TCR. Uh, the eight riders are accompanied by a convoy of eight cars and about 40 support staff consisting of photographers, videographers, mechanics, chefs, translators, and so on. Uh, they even have a truck which unpacks to become their own kitchen, making food for the entire team wherever they go. During the racing, even if the riders get split up, there's enough cars for one to follow each rider so the riders don't need to worry about running out of water or having a mechanical or whatever. And speaking of which, I noticed the riders were all using Tannis solid tires from South Korea. Now these are solid tires, so there's no air and no inner tube, and uh, Tannis are a sponsor of the race, and all of the riders are using these tires mean they don't have to worry about getting flats, which if you've got eight riders over 8,500 kilometers of Chinese roads, would probably be lots of stopping to change tires. Uh, I asked the riders what they thought of the tires. Most thought they were better than they expected. Uh, I had a quick try too, and I was pleasantly surprised. I thought they'd be heavy, but they're just 380 grams a tire, which is about the same weight as a normal road bike tire when you take into account the inner tube, the rim tape, and so on. The only negative is the road buzz vibrations are worse than on a normal tire, but the grip is fine and the rolling resistance is apparently even lower than a standard pneumatic tire. One major focus of the event is cultural exchange. After all, the Silk Road is responsible for bringing some Western culture to the East and vice versa. So you have these eight riders from very different cultures and backgrounds going to all these cities and when they arrive, they're usually audience to some local performance of some sort. Uh, the first day that I joined them in Luoyang, we were treated to some local specialty meal of uh, like 24 dishes in the meal. And you know, there's some really crazy flavors in there. After the meal, we went to experience a kind of theater performance telling the tale of the local Lungmen grottos. 
which is a collection of over, over 100,000 Buddha carvings dating back as long as 1,500 years ago. So it's really cool to get to learn some more history and culture of the places you're riding through instead of just racing from hotel to hotel without ever really learning anything about where you are. Now, the race tries to share this experience with everyone by live streaming the whole event. They have multiple live streams every day, and with the huge 200 km distance between some cities, these live streams sometimes last for up to 10 hours. Now, during the live streams, the live stream car will follow the race and the host will commentate, but also share some local culture and knowledge. They'll also invite some special guests into their streaming car to do some interviews. Uh, I got pulled into the streaming car for an interview on one of the days, but I was actually pretty grateful as the weather outside was absolutely miserable. Uh, the stream is pretty popular in China, well, very popular in China, uh, with both cyclists and just people who want to see more of what China has to offer. As I'm recording this on day 17 of the event, they have over 20 million views on their live stream, which is just crazy. On day two of me joining them, we got to a city called Sanmensha. There was a lovely park there where there was a race held for the eight riders with the times of their race being added to their general classification. Uh, it was just a small six kilometer looper of the park, but we did five laps. But in the middle of the loop, there was a beast of the cl a climb. Uh, one kilometer at 10%. Like uh, for such a small loop, that was a big kick in the middle. Like I joined in their race just for fun and ended up getting fourth place, but it was just a great experience. That loop was just perfect for bike racing. Uh, it would be great to see some real crit racing happening there too. Now, as these guys are called the Silk Road Messengers and the event is sponsored by China Post, at every city they go to, they go to the local post office and deliver some postcards from people in other cities. You kind of get the feeling that after a long day on the bike, some of the guys just want to go take a shower, but the post office staff are usually super hospitable, providing drinks and snacks, so it's all good. One of the stars of the event is a Serbian guy named Vladimir Vulicevic. I'm probably butchering his last name there, but he's probably the friendliest guy in all of pro cycling. Like, he's a pretty tall guy and definitely stands out wherever he goes. Uh, all the locals line up to take photos with him and he has so much patience to stand there and genuinely smile in each photo and yeah, just a super nice guy. The next day, we hit the road for an untimed ride to the city of Xi'an. Uh, as it's untimed, many of the riders just chose to ride at an easy pace, but lots of the local strung riders are keen to see just how fast the eight main messengers are, especially Vladimir. He gets a very good workout as every city he goes to, he's joined by fresh young guys who want to go full gas with him. And like, he'll usually go back and forth with them for a bit until he just puts the hammer down and rides them off his wheel on a climb. Uh, an hour later, we roll into the next city and again, we're met by a group of new riders. And amongst them, there are always a few young, strong guys with fresh legs and the process continues. We actually ended up riding right past my home here in China, which was pretty surreal, but no time to say hello as we were still pedal to the metal going to Xi'an. Uh, I haven't been doing much riding recently and this ride killed me. Like some of the times you're cruising nicely at 20 kilometers with the new people who've just joined you. But then, you know, the people want to put their, put their gas down and the full gas section start and they really burned. Like uh, I feel like the event is some epic kind of interval training for the likes of Vlad. When we got to Xi'an, I said farewell to the guys and headed back home. I had a great time with the Silk Road Messengers. I love what they're doing and they have a real camaraderie going on, something I was honored to share. And I wish them the best of luck in the more than 5,000 kilometers they have left to get to Kazakhstan. Anyway, this video mixes it up a bit from the usual product reviews we have going on here. If you like this change of pace, give this video a like and I'll know that you guys want more of this style. If you have any questions about the race or if you want to ask about taking part next year, let me know in the comments down below. As always, China Cycling out.